This November, an important documentary about Chris Drew will premiere at the Logan Theater. Known as the patron saint of street artists, Drew would give away art on the street or sell it for a very small price. I think this is an educational film too, and it's history of Chicago, and it shows you how things, you know, work and don't work. Free Speech, The Transcendent Journey of Chris Drew, Street Artist, is a film by Nancy Bechtel that follows Chris's crusade for free speech for artists. The big, the big statement that he made was, art is speech. Art is speech. Now, it took me a while to grasp that, and that is freedom of speech. And it is not equal to selling socks or anything else, and there's precedent for this. He had decided to challenge the city ordinance requiring a peddler's license for artists and ended up being charged with a class one eavesdropping felony under the Illinois statute. His was one of several cases where the Illinois eavesdropping law was used against citizens recording police on duty. In the fall of 2009, Drew set out to be arrested for selling art without a peddler's license. In order to make arguments against the city ordinance, he would have to be charged in court. He lined up an attorney to take the case pro bono, and he set out to record his sales activity and his expected arrest. One of the things that is um, a problem for an activist like Chris is that he can be dismissed as a kook and uh, a mere... Well, what do they say, sometimes gadfly, and not taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But Chris was a very serious man, and he had to endure sometimes, you know, other people's diminishment of him as a kook, but he endured that. And one of the things this video showed was how serious this issue was. He was not a, you know, he was responsible, he was uh, disciplined, he was respectful, this was not, you know, uh, a performance. This was a real lifetime commitment. And the video, you know, helped establish the seriousness of his cause and, and, uh, and of his person. Drew asked filmmaker Nancy Bechtel to record his activity for use in court. He also carried a micro cassette recorder in his vest pocket to record his interaction with the police. He was going on the street and, um, you know, first giving away the art and then selling it. And he was very conscious of the fact that he had been stopped by police before and he wanted documentation that he wasn't doing anything wrong. Now, on the day that he was arrested, uh, no one, we didn't know he was going to be arrested. We presumed he would be arrested at some point because he was, he was out to challenge this law. When he got arrested, we thought he was going to challenge the peddler's uh, ordinance uh, and with his pro bono attorney and $200 fine, no problem. But then when he got brought in, they changed, they dropped all the peddler's charges and they decided to challenge him with this law no one knew about in 2009, the Illinois eavesdropping law. At that point, he realized he was really in a, in a very different place. No longer could he challenge the peddler's license. He had to challenge the Illinois eavesdropping law, looking at four to 15 years in jail if he was convicted. The video recordings that Bechtel made for use in court became the basis for this documentary. The recorder that Chris carried in his pocket was confiscated by the police and used as evidence against him in the criminal trial. The ACLU had their own case going on. And uh, they were, of course, watching Chris's case and all these other cases, and but they had their own case, and they were the ones that came were able to get the permanent injunction. So first there came a permanent injunction right around NATO when they said, no, you can't arrest people. There are people, 2011, 2012, there are people all over with cameras. But in 2009, cell phone technology had not evolved to that point. So it's in March, as of March 2014, the Illinois eavesdropping law has been abolished by the, by the Illinois Supreme Court, but it was a long journey, you know. There were lots of people also that were charged with this law, remember, that didn't come to surface because they didn't have representation, they didn't know what was going on. He had representation and he was very learned. Not only does the film document Drew's fight against the eavesdropping law, but it also examines his hopes for any person to be able to express themselves as an artist. Now I have only a short chance to describe a vision and hope that it hooks a few dedicated minds. Every movement is only as strong as the art that informs it. The Art Patch Project 
is a project, a work project. Please use the Artifacts Project to make change. We must win our right to use our public space for self-expression. The film will screen for one night only on Friday, November 14th. 11 14 14. Tickets are available now at the Logan Theater box office or at thelogantheater.com. For Logan Square TV, I'm Dan O'Donnell.